It's interesting to be in the swamps of Louisiana, building with the guard, now Saeed. I'm building with the guard in Mega. He's out here in Louisiana. As you can see, we got a uh, swamp in the background. Well, close to it. <laughs> close to it, we got uh, the Vermilion River in the back. Um, you can't see it, but behind that is another little area called uh, Vermilionville that basically studies uh, set up for like Creole culture, Cajun culture and all that. There was so much to build on, yet we didn't get to cover everything in this particular trip. However, we touched on as much as we could. We can build a little bit more on herbs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, I wanted to touch on the, uh, uh, like, the kitchen herbs. Right, yeah. right. So we can we can definitely talk up on the kitchen herbs. We, we can cover cayenne pepper. We can ca uh, cover uh, things like nutmeg. We can cover bay leaf. Um, we can cover um, basil, mm -hmm. um, which is another good herb. Um, cinnamon mm -hmm. um, is another good herb. Uh, that's in the kitchen. Black pepper, right. turmeric. Mm. You know, okay. these yeah. are these are good kitchen kitchen herbs that can you know help you to uh, remedy against problems. Oregano. Oregano. Oregano is very very good. Oregano is very good. Oregano, fresh oregano, as well as you know the yeah and thyme. And thyme. Okay. Thyme is another one. We walked through this environment and I identified a few plants, how they relate to us and their medicinal values. Yeah, peace God. So right here is a, uh, this is a pecan tree and it um, doesn't quite look like a pecan yet because it's in, it's still in the early stages. Uh, you could tell by the, um, the green shell, so to speak, mm. but eventually um, it will fall off and you'll have a, full-fledged pecan, you know. Pecan, pecan. Y'all call them pecans, we call them pecans. Pecans, right? okay. Um, of course, um, with pecans, the other thing you can do, you can take the wood if you like to uh, cook, especially on the grill, you can use uh, pecan wood. Uh, the wood, wood of the actual? Of the actual plant. Of uh, the plant, okay. The tree, you can use that to cook with, um, you know, as, as far as grilling. Um, the other thing too, uh, with pecans, uh, if you were to soak them and drink the water, not as much as say walnuts are, mm. but with walnuts, if you were to take uh, walnuts, shell them, and put the walnuts in water and let them sit overnight, you can drink the liquid and it'll act as a um, anti-parasite uh, mm. uh, concoction, mm -hmm. help to get the parasites out your system. Um, and uh this is just out here just this, this is just yeah it's just it's just out here I'm trying to see if they got any other interesting um herbs that are out here while we're, we're here while in these parts i kept seeing these trees with a hair-like substance hanging from its branches i haven't seen trees like this anywhere else in my travels the god now saeed elaborates this is spanish moss hmm. Spanish moss is kind of like an air plant. It grows on uh, on other plants. In doing my own research, I've learned that Spanish moss isn't really a moss at all, nor is it native to Spain. It is an organism that grows on the surface of a plant and derives its moisture and nutrients from air, rain, and water. It takes part in nutrient cycles and adds to both diversity and biomass of the ecosystem in which they occur. Spanish moss grows on different types of trees. It grow, so it's in addition to the actual tree. Right, right. The tree doesn't produce it. The Spanish moss just grows on it. Okay, so then then what is what is what is that considered? Like it's not considered like a like a fungus or something or it's not a fungus, it's almost like a parasite almost almost so Spanish moss is, is a parasite. Almost, it's like. Um, so it needs a host, basically. Yes, that, that's the best. That's the best wording, probably. Um, the tree acts like a host to um, the uh, Spanish moss. It's not so much a parasite in that it grows on the host for physical support 
and does not necessarily affect the host negatively. Spanish moss has been used for various purposes. They are an important source of food to many species. So Spanish moss uh, is pretty much used by, you know, um, cleaning it and then you could make it into a tea. It's very good for diabetes. Mm. Spanish moss has been used for various purposes, including building insulation, packing materials, mattress stuffing, fibers, and more. Typically, the older plants of the tree will have more of this so-called moss grown on them. Very, very good for diabetes. Um, some other things. It'll help with colds a little bit, too. Spanish moss. Spanish moss. The white stuff, these are cloves, clover. White clover is an edible weed and has many uses along with different benefits. It is related to the legume, pea, or bean family. White clover is very good for, uh, for the body. Um, it does different things. A lot of people just cut their grass and, and throw it to the side. The white clover plant is an excellent companion crop that can grow along with lawn grasses. It is a perfect place for honeybees to get pollen along with nectar. Honey made from white clover is called clover honey. It is a rich source of protein and has antioxidant and anti-rheumatic properties. It's very good in vitamins and minerals for the body. See, I don't you know. Do you know any, any, any in particular vitamins and minerals that, that you uh, might look out for? With, um, I, would say, I would definitely say vitamin A. The sewer drainage being so close gives caution to these particular plants. Yet it's peace to be able to identify them when I see them. The knowledge that God has on herbs found in the field is extremely valuable. A discipline passed on from his old dad, who is also a herbologist. I didn't get to build with his old dad this trip. Perhaps I'll get the opportunity the next time I'm out here. So my father started off showing me different herbs in the yard. You know, easy stuff was like dandelion. Being out here, I had to be mindful of poisonous plants, such as poison ivy, which I learned isn't poison to everybody. No, oh, no, everybody not allergic to it like that. So I, some people, some people can just actually touch poison ivy and. Yeah, it depends. Like most of the time, people who can do that, they've been around it so much that it doesn't really bother them too much. Mm. Um, there even are some people who actually uh, ingest small amounts. Poison ivy is a type of allergenic plant native in these parts. It was once considered a single species. Now poison ivies are generally treated as a complex of separate species. Not everyone is affected by this plant in the same way. Those that are affected suffer from an itchy, irritating, and sometimes painful rash. The rash is caused by a liquid compound in the plant's sap. Despite its common name, it is not a true ivy, but rather a member of the cashew and pistachio family. I put it to you like this, plants that, that are poisonous, some plants, even though they're poisonous, can be utilized as a medicine. Plants that are medicines can turn into poisons, depending on the application. Hmm. You know, but all of that right there is poison ivy. All of it is poison ivy. Everything on this tree is poison ivy. Everything green with those leaves like that. Those uh, five leaves that you see, the uh, one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one pointed like that. Mm -hmm. That's all poison ivy. Interesting. Particular variations of the plant is commonly eaten by many animals, and the seeds are consumed by birds. Yet poison ivy is often thought of as an unwelcome weed. Poison ivy is attached to a vine that's growing on the tree. If you look at the poison ivy close, you'll see it attached to a vine, right? But if you look back at that tree and you see there's some other leaves growing on the branches, the big trunks of the branches of the tree, like right here, that's actually uh, called resurrectus. So the, the ones on the vine is poison ivy. Correct. And this is called resurrectus plant. The ones on the side. Yeah, the ones, if you're looking straight here, like right where my, my arm is. Oh, sh oh, straight up, going straight up. Yeah, like right, like look, uh, like right here. Like look at my thumb. 
and then you see what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Right, right there, all of that is called resurrectus. Um, when it's not raining, it's dead looking. Right, it looks like this brownish grayish thing, mm -hmm. and then when it rains, it comes up. So resurrectus, man. Yeah, resurrectus. Peace out. Take some of those little balls that they got forming on the tree, mm -hmm. and you put them, uh, and even some of the leaves. And you put them in like a little dish, you know, um, it'll have your house smelling good. Oh, yeah. You can use it as potpourri. Okay. You know the name of this, right? I don't know the name of this tree. I forgot. And my father, they, they better have uh, certain types of trees. In my Although I, I will say, we have one of these in our yard. Of course, it was that big. You must do your own research. As I did. If Mega did this.